Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for today's video. My name is David and I do these videos to hopefully, hopefully, help you guys heal and recover from your traumas and narcissistic relationships. Today's a video about keeping the score and moving the goalposts and this is a two-part video. Um, this video is just about this. The next video really is about what happens in these kinds of relationships where people are keeping the score and moving the goalposts. Before I get started, I'd appreciate it if you haven't already. Consider subscribing to the channel down below, vote up or down, comment in the comment section, ask questions, share this video. Thank you very much. So these relationships, people that do this stuff, this relationship is really about grandiosity, entitlement, self-centeredness, control. Really, really one-sided relationships, which is a most codependent, toxic, abusive, narcissistic relationships. Really one-sided. It's kind of like a parent-child relationship or a boss-employee relationship. D.A. Wolf states that where uh, reciprocity ends, scorekeeping begins. No reciprocation. Um, this is something that we may all be guilty of, guys. Maybe. Huh? Think about it. Um, I want to know your examples, please. Down below, what are some of your examples of keeping the score? So here, here's, because I think we've all done it. Um, it's, I, I always talk about relationships, um, anybody's relationship. This, is, this happens, really common, the most common, I think. And it's where we don't want to be vulnerable anymore. It's where one side stops being vulnerable and so the other stops, okay? This also is common. It can be common. Um, I did all the cooking, so you need to clean the bathroom. Doesn't sound that bad, right? And I know we've all had this happen to us and we've maybe said things like this. Let's get more extreme, right? The narcissist says, I work, you have to clean the house. Okay, but then I make a lot of money. I work really hard. I work this many hours. I'm never, you know, I'm always at, I have to work and I'm at work and I pay for everything and I take care of everything. I'm responsible for everything. And you don't clean the house well enough. This isn't well enough, this isn't good enough. Why do I always have to fix your mistakes? Imagine if the breadwinner doesn't share with you and things that you need and things that you have to do and pay for, you have to ask, 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 and then they're always fixing your mistakes, always taking care of you, always, do I always have to do this for you? <clears throat> what are your examples? I wanna know because your guys' examples are better than these videos, really. I can come up with one, but you guys can come up with 10, 20, 100 good ones. That really happened. Moving the goalpost. Moving the goalpost. In sports, right? If this was a goalpost and you have to kick it into the goalpost and, and you kick it and make it, and I say, yeah, that was good, but, but next time you have to kick it through here. And the next time here. And next time here. It's like never good enough, is it? Doesn't matter what you agreed on. And that's really important. That's what I want to talk about because that's what's really all this comes down to. Moving the goalposts, changing terms or agreements or rules during or still in progress, like the game, right? Game's not over, you're still in progress, so I just keep moving it, moving it. Even though the goalpost started here, it ends up back here towards the end of the game. It's humiliation. Think about this. Dangling the carrot, we've heard that term before. Imagine dangling the carrot to somebody who needs it. Imagine an employee or an employer boss doing this to an employee with their paycheck, not paying them every Tuesday like they said, now it's Wednesday, now it's Thursday. I've had this happen to me, it's awful, especially when you don't make enough money or it's hard, you don't think you can get another job right away, stuff like this, and you, you end up bowing down to this, not realizing or knowing how to escape or stop or get out of it. That's what causes PTSD. Humiliation, dangling that carrot, raising it higher and higher and higher. Imagine how much fun, if you were demented, you could have with that, watching them Oh, oh, keep trying. Entertainment, control. Imagine a, cho a child wants a toy, right? A child wants a toy, and you keep adding chores. You have to do your chores. Uh, I had a stepmom. Uh, I had a new stepmom when I was 10 years old. And um, she, she would... Uh, I, I didn't know at the time, but I realized later that she just didn't want me to go out. It's easier to control me if I'm if I'm home, in my room, punished, stuff like this. They make up punishments and, and ground me for it. But 
one example was, you know, maybe it's summer, I don't have school today. I want to go play. Sure, you can go play after you do your chores. Here's your chores. I can be 10, 11, 12, and I'm looking at this list going, my God. I could take all day doing this because some of them were pretty difficult and involved. Staining the deck, waxing, washing and waxing cars. 10, 11, 12. I could take all day to do this. Or I could get this done as fast as I possibly can. I might be able to still play today. You go get that stuff done as fast as you can. And you go, you want to go play. And she says, wait, dude, let me go check. Goes out and checks and says, you didn't organize the shelves in the garage and, and the tools and stuff. It says sweep. Part of sweeping the garage is cleaning. The whole thing, David, don't be lazy. Okay? Go out there, organize the shelves, you know, put all the tools just right, just the way my dad likes them. Okay, start going out to play. Wait, I didn't check it yet. You told me to do this and so I did it. I'm done, I'm gonna go play. Let me go check. Goes out there, finds some dirt. Moves a box, right? I was lazy. I don't care, I mean, I don't consider myself a lazy person. I don't like to be lazy, but 10, 11, 12, I missed a spot. What does she do? She goes out there, pulls a box, finds the little thing of dirt and spread, tries to spread it throughout the whole garage. Sweep it again. You go sweep it again, find some more dirt, spread it around. This continues until the day's over. And then if, even if the garage isn't clean, that's fine. Day's over. Dinner's soon. Don't need to go out and play. Moving those goalposts. Changing terms and agreements and rules than what the terms were that you agreed upon. Hopefully, what I'm hinting at is terms must be agreed upon. Talk about it. Think about it. If you're going to have a roommate, right? Say you need some help. Say, say you have a big house, a lot of empty rooms. You want someone to live with you just for fun, for company. You need the money. Are you just going to have someone move in and not tell them any rules or anything? Do you like to wear shoes in the house? Do you, do you, do you like the toilet seat up or down? Right? Do, you, do you want them to clean up after themselves, not eat your food? You, you can't agree on this later while it's in progress. You have to do it before, right? The rules of the game. How can you win at a game if you don't know the rules? Or if the rules change? Know the rules and don't change them unless you agree upon them. Here's an example. <laughs> Wedding day. Yeah, you agree on a day. or Maybe you never do. <clears throat> Maybe they propose to you because they don't want to lose you or control you. But when it comes to setting a day, it never does. Or you do, and it keeps moving, moving, moving. Why? These are forms of, of criticism, right? You're not good enough. You need to lose some weight. I don't like your friends. I mean, right? It's like justified criticism. What are your examples? I want to hear if you can. Codependency is expressed in relationships by controlling and managing the other person. Codependency is a way of, um, it's like it's behaviors only. And it's saying, I'm not in control of my life. I can't manage my life or a specific part, especially relationships. I'm going to manage your life. Right? The boss, the employee who's going to manage, micromanage every little thing you do. Maybe I'm not doing my job. So that's a little bit of what's going on. It's easier to completely focus on you. If I have no responsibility and I'm not going to take any accountability and I'm just the way I am and I have accepted it and I'm not going to change that, then anything that needs to be done, anything that's different, anything I want is all up to you. Do this, jump high, jump, do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that. No, you always do that. You never do this enough. You never do that puppet relationships must be equal and those those are terms decided by the two of you spoken about I often talk about sliding into commitment over deciding unconsciously being in these relationships it happened to you guys a lot reciprocation Behaviors and actions and gestures must be reciprocated. 
and not by keeping the score, but by agreed terms. Equal and autonomy. Equality, reciprocation, and autonomy. I am my own separate person with my own separate wants, needs, feelings, and values, and you are your own. And I accept you, you accept me. Because a lot of this is about acceptance. Right? If I'm keeping the score and moving the goalposts and criticizing and complaining, what does that tell you? I didn't agree. Right? I, I, I'm not accepting of you. Most relationships end in six months, something like that. Lack of acceptance. You know, you, you can only accept humans if you if if you can accept yourself, shortcomings, failures, mistakes, and not placing 100% importance on that. Well, that's not a narcissist. What do you guys think? I, I, I'd love to hear your examples of keeping the score and moving the goalpost if you feel like sharing them. Um, I know it can be difficult sharing your personal experiences. I like to think that this is a safe place. I hope you guys feel that way too. If not, tell me so that you guys feel comfortable in this little community, sharing examples and getting feedback, validation, things like this. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. I hope this uh, video helped. Let me know. Uh, second part, next one. Being in relationships like this causes resentment by a very grandiose person, and that's the next video I'll come out. Should be coming out today. Thanks. Love yourself first. Bye.